Hi there. Now we're going to step through how you can get LightSide to show you what are the weights that were attributed to each of the features that you have extracted. And then you can start to think about what the weights mean, which things the model found valuable for making the prediction. Now this assumes that you have extracted a feature space and that you have run an experiment on the Build Models panel. And now you're going to look at that model and interpret the weights. So the overview of what we will try to accomplish in this short lecture is that we're going to use the Re Explore Results panel to look at feature weights. Normally the Explore Results panel is used for an error analysis, but you can also use it to inspect your model, and inspecting the model is in fact part of doing an error analysis. We won't go, go into detail about error analyses, but at least you'll see the interface that you would use, and you can read about it in the user's manual. So you'll gain some experience here on noticing what the weights are that were attributed to features in the model and starting to reason about what that might mean. And we'll also discuss some caveats about spurious correlations that might have been found. So here's the Explore Results panel. In the upper left-hand corner is a pull-down menu where you will select the model that you want to inspect. So on the Build Models panel, every time you run an experiment, right next to the button that you press to run the experiment is a text box where you can label the resulting model so that you can pick the right one when you get to this Explore Results panel. In the next pane, now highlighted, you see two things. First of all, you see uh, a confusion matrix. It's labeled Cell Highlight. Select one of those cells. Then below it, you'll see Evaluations to Display. For now, what you want to do is scroll down and select Feature Weight, because that's what you want to know about each feature. So here we have selected um, the cell that corresponds to ne negative examples predicted as positive, and we want to know what was the feature weight, so what is the contribution towards each feature towards making this classification. So positive weights are going to be a push towards making this classification, and negative weights are going to be a push away from making this classification. And the magnitude of the weight is going to tell us how big of a push that is. Now let's talk about the features in table pane. And here what we see are all of our features, and next to it, the weight for each of those features. And we can sort by clicking at the, uh, the heading for a column. So if we click on Feature Weight, we will sort the list in one way. You can see here it's sorted so that the largest negative values are at the top. If we wanted to reverse that and have the largest positive values at the top, we would click again. So now we have this sorted list and we can see all of our features. Now we have selected the cell that corresponds to negative examples predicted as positive. So we want to know what are the weights with respect to a prediction of positive. So um, words that are negative should have a large negative weight. So the word boring has a large negative weight because it's a negative word. So it counts against a positive classification. That makes sense. Again, mediocre or lax or worse or dull, or bore, disappointment, plodding. All of these are negative words, and it makes sense that they have large negative weights. If we um, scrolled down, we would see at the opposite end lots of positive words having a large positive weight. And this is because even though, as we have discussed, it's not enough to consider positive and negative words when making the classification, the model still picks up on these positive negative words as reasonably good predictors of a class. Now the bottom part of this interface allows us to look at where these texts occur or where these words occur in texts. And so um, what we should do is from the Exploration plugin pull-down menu, select Documents Display as it is here in the in this screenshot, and check off Filter Documents by Selected Feature and Documents from Selected Cell, just as you see. And then what you'll see are all of the example instances that are in that cell of negative examples predicted as positive, 
that have that the word that's selected. So you can see if you look over to the features and table pane, the word that's selected is bad. And so down here, we'll see all instances that have the word bad. And when we check off, you can see to the right the text and the word bad is highlighted. So you can see where it occurs in context. And this is a good way of being able to say, okay, I see this word, I see its weight, and now what I want to see is the context in which it occurs. And that's going to help me to look at what is it about these examples that makes it correct to classify the way it should have been uh, classified, but what is the word that is triggering this um, classification that is wrong in this case, and uh, what is it that, that's being missed potentially? How is it that the word as flagged uh, might be being taken out of context, for example? So we can start to look at the weights we can start to think about whether they make sense or not, and we can start to look at how those features are appearing in the texts and whether it makes sense or it doesn't make sense. This is really a precursor to error analysis, but it's also a way of interpreting your model. Okay, so similarly, at the other end of the spectrum, if we would click to get the the large positive weights to come towards the top, we would see things like um, refreshing, enjoyable, witty, hilarious. And again, if we want to see those words, we can click on a feature like hilarious. Then we can see all of the cells that have the word hilarious, and we can start to think about why uh, is hilarious uh, appearing in this text, and yet it's actually negative. Sometimes you find some non-intuitive results. For example, the word count has um, a very high positive weight. Why? Well, perhaps because of the expression count on, which you can see below. You can also see that it occurs relatively few times and in the cell. And because of that, uh, it's not causing an error very many times. But, you know, it just so happens that when it occurs, it's more associated with the wrong classification. Okay, so we started to look at some examples. Obviously, there's a lot more there. You could spend a lot more time rummaging around and trying to think about the reasons why texts are being classified the way they are. Why are these features being considered positive or negative? You can look for trends. Okay, you know, so within this cell, this word occurred you know, such and such number of times. And as I look at the context, I can see it's usually occurring in a negative context. And yet the model thinks that word is negative, but actually it's more the context. So that's the kind of case where we get these spurious correlations and we might be able to fight against them by including in our feature space some features that take more context into account. And we'll start to see some of those kinds of features in our more advanced feature extraction lecture. So we've started to explore the results panel. We've seen how it offers some affordances for supporting interpretation of feature weights. We could spend a lot more time on this, but this will at least get you started along the path. We see that some of the feature weights are non-intuitive, but sometimes they're non-intuitive because words taken out of context can be used multiple ways. And if we look at the context and we think about how we might add richer features that notice something about the context, we might be able to get fewer of these uh, non-intuitive non-intuitive weights in our model. If you look at light size user manual, you can see how to use the explore results panel more extensively and even to start playing around with the idea of error analysis. So thank you so much and I look forward to our future lectures.